Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, it's very nice to have you here, and uh, it's great uh, and pleasure to uh, announce that the start of our new term for the iPhone uh, monthly webinar. Uh, so usually this uh, this month, uh, web monthly webinar were held uh, uh, the first uh, Thursday afternoon for the every month. So we are really glad today uh, we have two speakers. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Aikai and uh, Professor uh, Ki how to pronounce Kiwi? Uh, Kiti Wati. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So uh, uh, you will have. Uh, I think uh, our uh, we usually will have moderator, but today I think he has some connection problem. Uh, although we have Luan. Uh, last night we have dry run last night it still have some uh, problems and comes up so now i would like uh, uh, invite uh, regina to uh, to be the moderator and introduce our uh, speakers today and uh, hold the whole uh, webinar and ask her uh, operate the question and answer sections so please uh, regina Thank you, Professor uh, Jin, for uh, giving me the opportunity. So, dear all, a very good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to everyone. We welcome you to 23rd monthly webinar and the first of this year. I hope you all are doing well. Today, we have a wonderful program planned on PET CT for radiotherapy planning with two eminent speakers, Dr. Ekhav NG and Dr. Kitivar Kamban, our moderator of the program. Uh, was Dr. Zhao Dingli from China, but somehow because of some unfortunate circumstances, he cannot join us. Uh, he has joined us for today, but uh, let me proceed with the program. So our first uh, first speaker of the day is Dr. N uh, Ekhao NG. Uh, Dr. NG is a senior lecturer in clinical oncology unit, faculty of medicine, University of Malaya. He served as a radiation oncology medical physicist in the Department of radiation uh, Radiotherapy and Radiation Oncology, Hospital Kuala Lumpur, and National Cancer Institute. He was an assistant director at Medical Radiation Surveillance Division, a national regulatory body in regulating radiation in medicine. He has also served as a physics advisory editor for the Medical Dosimetry Reviewers and, mem and member of editorial board for several local and international peer review journals. He is also a newly elected secretary journal of a firm for, the, for this year, that is uh, 2023 to 2025. Yeah. So uh, our second speaker of the day is Dr. Kitivat Khamman. Dr. Kitivat Khamman is an assistant professor and medical physicist at the Division of Nuclear Medicine, Department of Radiology, Faculty of Medicine. Uh, Chulong Goncon University. He currently serves as a program director in radiological technology program, uh, Chulong Goncon University and a chair of radiological technology continuing education of Thailand. He also serves as an executive committee of South Asian Federation of Organization of Medical Physicists, that is CFOM, uh, Professional Relation Committee PRC of uh, AOCMP. Uh, uh, science, as a member of science committee of IOMP and a council member of ISRRT. He has been invited as an invited speaker at several local and international conferences. He has published extensively in several academic journals, proceedings, abstracts, book chapters, and contributes as an associate editor of Thai Journal of Radiological Technology and a reviewer for several distinguished journals such as AAPM Medical physics, radiological physics, and technology, ETC. His professional expertise are in area of medical physics, especially radiopharmaceutical dosimetry, kinetic modeling, therastonic, uh, therastonic dosimetry, patient dose optimization, radiation protection, including radiation risk evaluation in pediatric nuclear medicine. So now I welcome you all and our speakers of the day. And I directly hand over the program to Dr. Ekhav Ng for further proceedings. Thank you, Rajini. So uh, there are two parts of these uh, lectures, and uh, we will start the part one with Dr. Kitibat with the with an overview of the PET imaging in oncology 
oncology purposes. So Dr. Kitivat, the floor is yours. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Dr. Yevao. Um, okay, let me share my screen. All right, so can you see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. As I mentioned, so this is the, um, I, I will talk first about the capacity for radiation oncology. So I will spend time about uh, 20 minutes and after that we will follow by Dr. Yip Ao regarding the technical consideration of using PCT in, in, in uh, TP. Well, so let's start first from the overview of the PCT for radiation oncology. So as we know, for the PCT imaging is a powerful molecular imaging that provides the functional information correspond to the location and concentration of radio tracer in the target organ inside the body of the patients. Okay, and then right now it's really useful and powerful for the- uh, um, Well, for the detection of the unknown primary tumor site prognostic information uh, for, the uh, for the therapy response evaluation and also for the radiation therapy treatment planning. That is the thing that we emphasize for today. Well, so this is the example of the Fulinetin FDT PCT imaging that is the widely used little pharmaceutical that widely used in the PCT imaging for the tumor imaging. So as we know for the PCT imaging, it is combined between the anatomical information and also for the uh, functional inf in information from the PET imaging. And then we got the fields information from both of the imaging. So let's uh, back to the basic of the PET imaging. Some of you already know about this. I, I just mentioned a bit. There are three steps in the PET imaging. So due to the unstable of the nuclei for the uh, proton enrich, so the nucleus tie, and, and then the nucleus emit the positron and then Due to the proton in which it try to uh, translate itself to to become the new uh, to become the uh, to become the, um, the 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 neutron in order to uh, to keep the balance between the neutron and the and the proton. So it emits the the positron, and then the positron that emit from the nucleus will travel a bit and interact the free electron inside the body of the patient in the location of the uptake of the radio pharmaceutical. And then um, the annihilation of the positron and the emission of the uh, photon pair occur after that. So and then we detect the, the coincident detection of the photon pair. So this photon has the uh, energy of 511 kV with the opposite direction of the travel. So this is the, uh, the concept of the of the annihilation coincidence. And then there are, there are three types of the coincidence occur in the PET imaging. The first one is the true coincidence. So this coincidence, so the pair of the, pro, uh, of the uh, proton occur from the same annihilation and interact into the um, opposite of the detector uh, almost the same time with the 180 degree of the direction. So for the two coincidence, and this is the 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 annihilation. This is the uh, coincidence that uh, really need in the PET imaging to improve the for the for the image quality to maintain the image quality. Uh, anyway, anyway, so for the uh, PET coincidence, it also has the scatter coincidence and also the random coincidence. For the scatter, so for this uh, for the scatter coincidence is. Um, originate from the same annihilation, but one of the photon um, scatter uh, the tissue inside of the of the body of the patients, and then like still interact into the 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 board of the detector almost the same time within the, the coincident window. And another one is the random coincident. This is um, come from the difference of the annihilation event. So both of the scatter and, and the random coincidence. So this one uh, contribute the, um, the image noise and also could degrade the image quality. So in the PET imaging, we try to like, uh, try to determine how much of the scatter and the, the random coincidence occur in, in the PET imaging. 
uh, for the pet image in uh, formation. So as I mentioned, so uh, we can obtain the line of the response here uh, or the LAR, and then both of the um, coincident proton should be interact within the coincident window. And we have to determine the window, like the difference of the arrival time should be within uh, less than five or within uh, 12 nanoseconds. If both of the photon uh, interact within the coincident timing window, so we register this event as the valid event. So that's why in the PET imaging, we no need to have the physical collimator, collimator similar to the spec imaging because we use the concept of the detection of the coincident of the photon from the annihilation. Again, for the PET process, so uh, when we inject the radio pharmaceutical into the patients, and then um, while well, the nucleus of the uh, furin etchin will emit um, the, the, the positron and then interact with the free electron inside the body of the patient and then create the 501 keV uh, two photon and we detect by both of the detector in the uh, opposite way. And this is the example of the PET imaging. So in PET imaging, um, in terms of the quantification for the PET imaging and also use in radiotherapy uh, treatment planning, um, right, to, to, de to determine uh, how much of the, of the tumor or of the um, activity, radioactivity uptake in, in, into the tumor, in, in, in the tumor or the, the, the cancer cell. So the SUV stands for the standardized uptake value represent the quantitative uptake of the FDG or uh, the radio tester inside the, the tissue, which is normalized to the body weight. And the SUV can be calculated by the following equation. So the activity concentration in the region of interest in terms of the bacterial per mu and uh, divide by the injected activity that normalized to the body weight of the, of the patients. So basically, the SUV, uh, when, we, when we measure the SUV, when the SUV greater than 2.5 uh, is considered suspicious for the malignancy. So for example, over here, so we suspect uh, like uh, for, for the tumor here that uptake the, the activity and then we measure the SUV because the tumor cell uptake more glucose than normal or healthy cells. So, um, this is could be used as the like the, the threshold or the criteria to consider which tumor is the malignant or which tumor is just the, the um, non-malignant tumor. Well, in in treatment planning, when we use the PCT, so this is very really useful in order to define the uh, target volume. So this is for example when when the um, radiation oncologist. Uh, they delineate the tumor in order to define the, the target volume. So it's quite too difficult when you use the CT due to this is the um, anatomical information. But it actually for the PCT can help to, to uh, clarify the boundary of the tumor uh, like this. So it's like sometimes it could, um, the, the tumor or the cancer spread in the subclinical that cannot uh, see from the, only from the CT image only. So when uh, we fuse uh, the PET and the CT together, so this could be very helpful to define the, 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 uh, the, the, the target volume. Um, as we know, in, in radiotherapy, we can classify the tumor volume uh, definition or uh, according to um, three category. The first one is the cross tumor volume. This is the volume of the known tumor uh, at, at the red color, as you can see here. And for the clinical target volume or CTV, uh, this is the GTV, but expand to the, into the region of suspected for the subclinical that may not be visible from, from like from the CT or from the anatomical uh, imaging. And for the planning target volume or the PTV, this is the geometric expansion in 2D that account for the geometric uncertainty. So this is the main pre um, tumor volume definition, uh, target volume definition according to the treatment planning system. That uh, Dr. Yet will um, go to more detail about this. 
So for the tumor volume uh, need to be determined or need to be delineated accurately and precisely in order to improve the uh, treatment of the patients. Well, so this is the example of using the PCT in treatment planning for the target definition. As you can see here, uh, for the, this is the, the, the CT image. So uh, for the PTV definition, by using the only for the CT, as you can see from the uh, yellow color here. And then it's quite different when we when, 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 uh, use the PET and combine with the CT to define the, to define the PTV. So you can see for the PTV that combine between the PET and CT is the red color, as you can see here. So this is the paratracheal lymph node that uh, could not see from only from the CT image. And then this could be very useful for the management of the treatment planning or sometimes to, to change the plan and to improve the, 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 the treatment as well. And well, so this is the example of the FPT PET characterization. So for the FPT PET that used to, um, to help for the treatment planning. And so it could be improved the sensitivity uh, more than um, 84 to 87% for the sensitivity. And it's like 88 to 93% for the specificity and improve the accuracy as well. And according to the, the, the publication, well, could be a chain for the management of the treatment for the average about 30%. So this is the example for the uh, PET imaging for the esophageal cancer. So you can see here, um, it's like uh, for the several study report the high sensitivity of the FTG PET for the staging and of the, of the esophagus cancer. So the detection rate of the primary tumor range from um, 69 to 100%. And uh, in most studies, the FTG is more sensitive than CT as, as I mentioned. Um, and then, so this is the example of the actual contrast enhanced CT as shown you on the website and then for a few PCT image that uh, from the same level that show the intense of the FG, FDG uptake in the primary tumor and really useful to, do, to define the target volume for the treatment planning. Again, so this is the example of the treatment planning uh, um, by using the PCT from McManus et al. that uh, published um, many years ago um, for the treatment planning using the PCT in esophageal cancer. So, um, well, as you, can, as, as you can see here, this is the GTV that um, define only from the CT that you can see from uh, in, in the pink color here. So this is the cross tumor volume from the CT and the light uh, blue color. So this is the, the, the PTV from only the CT, but when use the PCT, so you can see that uh, for the GHTV that obtained that obtained from the PET imaging is quite different from the CT here, and also for the PTV that obtained from the PET imaging, well, could could uh, also difference from the PTV in in CT is quite large difference. So um, it could be change the decision and also change uh, or adjust the treatment planning for the patient to improve the um, to improve the outcome of the treatment. And also for the, for the PET CT is very really important uh, in, in oncology patients, for example, like for the um, lymphoma evaluation to see the treatment response. Uh, this is the example of the lymphoma when using uh, for the PET CT scan here. And also after post therapy, after the patient got the chemotherapy. So it's very, really, um, very really useful. And also use the PCT to follow up the lymphoma as well to, to see the progression of the lymphoma. Uh, for example, in this patient, it, it's like after the chemotherapy, uh, it still has the residual tumor over here. And then um, the radiation oncology um, um, decided to, to use the external beam radiotherapy to complement of the treatment after the radio, um, 
uh, after the chemotherapy and then follow up by the PCG. Well, and right now we have the digital PCG scanner that could be improved uh, dramatically of the image quality compared, compared to the um, conventional PCG. So this is the example of the brain scan uh, that obtained from the digital PCG scanner from the, yeah, from the GE Discovery IQ here. And at our uh, uh, hospital, we, we just trained, uh, we just installed the new one of the digital PCG that utilizes the silicon PM detector. And well, this is the example, this is the, the, the picture of the conventional PCT that utilizes the PM2. But right now we have the silicon PM. And uh, the image quality is uh, better a lot. And we could reduce the scan time like uh, from half an hour, just only to 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, sorry, from half an hour to reduce to 10 to 15 minutes uh, for the whole body scan. And we can reduce the inject activity like the half dose protocol from 0 0.15 millicurie per uh, kilogram to only 0 0.07 millicurie per kilogram. So it's for the digital PCT can reduce the time and also can reduce the eject activity. That's very really useful for the uh, oncology patient. And we have um, a lot of the patient come from the radio radiotherapy department for uh, to scan the PCT and use the PCT image for the treatment planning. As I uh, mentioned from, last, from from previous slides, so the di digital PCT uh, utilized the silicon PM that, um, that the, the design is quite compact compared to the uh, conventional uh, PCT that utilized the uh, uh, photo multiplier to. So, and then the, 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 the detector block here, uh, it could be uh, convert the, um, the, the proton to, to become the uh, electric, electronic signal and, and can produce more signal and also can improve the image quality uh, pretty well compared to the conventional one. Um, well, this is the example of the digital PCT uh, scan again for the um, for the brain. So you can see um, the the brain tissue here is quite really clear compared to the conventional one, and you can see like the, the vessel inside the brain here as well. And uh, the useful of the digital PCT is very useful to scan for in terms of the dynamic acquisition and can see the the changing of the um, uptake uh, over the time. So you, this is the example of the, um, of the uh, dynamic scan by using the digital PCT for the brain scan of the 318F here. So you can see like uh, the changing um, of the uptake over time uh, come from the, um, uh, the, the the system into the, the brain tissue here. Okay, and, and also this one is the example of the fluid etching sodium fluoride for the brain uh, uh, imaging. So the image is quite pretty clear and you can do like the dynamic scan to um, improve the diagnostic from the digital PCT. Okay, as I mentioned, when we use the digital PCT right now, uh, we can use the mode of the continuous bed motion or CMD acquisition. So, well, this is an example. So, we, uh, the, 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 uh, the couch can move continuously. And then we can reduce the time of the scan. And you can see here, this is the position. And that, that, uh, that the location or the position change when when the when, when the um the, the patient uh, when when the uh when we use this mode for the continuous wave motion and we can reduce the scan time and also can improve the image quality because we got like the continuous data previously we used the uh based on the base uh the the base um acquisition is like 
uh, we acquire in each bed and then we combine it together to obtain the whole body's uh, image of the pet imaging. Okay, this is the example of the digital pet CG. Okay. Well, uh, after uh, acquired a pet uh, CT scan, for the pet CT for registration is, um, well, is very important. As I mentioned, after acquired data, so we have to check the pet CT registration uh, we, can, we can do like the, the manual or the automatic registration between PET and CT. Um, because the proper of the core registration between the PET and CT is critical for the proper diagnostic as well. And also it affects the quantification to measure like the SQE in order to determine um, like the, the amount of the activity that uptake in the tumor as well. Right. For example, this is the unveil of the, this is the misalignment of the registration between PET and CT. So the SUV about um, 4.6, but um, when we do the better of the registration between PET and CT, when, and then measure the SUV again. So you can see like the difference of the SUV measure from the misalignment and also the good alignment between PET and CT. It, uh, it changed um, dramatically compared to, to the misalignment of the PET-CT. What is the, the, the cause of the misalignment between PET and the CT? So the mismatch between PET and CT, so in the CT, we align. Uh, the concept is like the capture of the anatomy at the one location of the breathing cycle. It's like we, we capture, yeah, the, the, uh, just, just one shot of the, uh, in between of the breathing cycle. But for the PET scan, of course you cannot hold your bed like five minutes or 10 minutes during the scan. So the image that obtained from the PET imaging is the average of the anat anatomical over the full breathing cycle. And so this result one of the, of the, um, of the, source that um, learning the image and also cause the mismatch between the PET and the CT. So that's why before we uh, sending the PET CT to the, to, to, to the treatment planning system or to the oncology department, we have to check about the mismatch between the PET and the CT. And this is the example of the uh, free beating of the PET CT and the uh, deep inspiration with hole of the PET CT. So you can see for the deep inspiration bed pole CT can provide uh, the, the clearer of the image quality compared to the free uh, breathing pet CT. And right now we can use like the, the gating for the respiratory gating to like to, um, to, to match between like the pet and CT and also to improve the image quality and reduce the motion artifact. And other thing is um, we can use like the, the time of flight of the PCT. This is um, also in the digital PCT as well. So the time of flight, so this concept use the difference of the arrival time of the two photon. So, and then we use the difference of the timing that interact to the detector to determine the location of the annihilation. And then, um, and then we can get better the image quality and also increase the signal to noise ratio. This is the example of the, of the patient who has the um, colon cancer for the obese patient. With the non-time of flight, you can see here, we couldn't see the uh, small patient. It's too difficult to detect, but with the time of flight, so we can see like the, uh, we can detect the, the, the small lesion over here due to the better of the signal to noise ratio and the, better of the resolution. Well, so uh, that all of my presentation regarding the overview of the PCT in radiotherapy. Okay, I will pass to uh, the next speaker to um, Dr. Yip Ao. Uh, yeah, Gao? Oh.
Hello, Dr. Ikhau. Can you hear us? Uh, uh, can, can you unmute his microphone? It seems he could not unmute. Yeah, I guess. Let me. Let me can, can you do this for him? Yes. Hi, thank you very much. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Kitty Vat, for an excellent talk. I think uh, this that will be given a very good overview of the PET CT, uh, PET -CT imaging in, in radiation oncology. And really, uh, the motivations of our uh, webinar today is actually to, to create awareness uh, of, the, of the usefulness of PET CT for radiation oncology, in particular for radiotherapy treatment planning. So, uh, and the learning objective uh, is to understand the importance of the PET CT uh, for radiotherapy treatment planning. And secondly, to understand several technical uh, requirements of integrating of the PET CT for radiotherapy treatment planning purposes. So I think in the, in the old time where we come across with the old uh, 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 linear or external beam therapy unit where we use COPA-60, there is none of the imaging uh, modality attached with the treatment unit in order to for the set of verifications. And later we can see, for example, the, uh, the portal imaging or the CT will come into the the, the services where they actually uh, provided uh, additional uh, uh, verifications tools for, for the radiographers to verify the setup. And more recently, we can see that the Linux is uh, coming to the pictures and where we can use those uh, very beautiful anatomy uh, structures uh, to guide us uh, in terms of the setup errors. And we, we, are, we know that uh, it is still in the research phase where the molecules uh, a pet guided uh, radiotherapy will come into the picture in the future. And the question is, are we ready for that? So this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, webinar is actually to, to, to create awareness among the community where what the medical physicists or the community can do in order to improve the services. And just a quick question to all the participants. Is your institutions currently using the pet CT for radiotherapy treatment planning? You can use a chat box uh, with you, uh, A, yes, B, no, and C, not sure. So could you please have a quick uh, uh, type in your answer, please? So thank you, Kim, uh, for your feedback. Excellent, yep. Excellent. So yeah, briefly, you can see that all the responses is uh, showing that you guys are having the capacity for, for these uh, radiotherapy treatment planning purposes. And this is really great. And, and uh, unfortunately, that will come to our knowledge and some centers that which is uh, in our knowledge are still underutilizing uh, these facilities for radiation oncology, especially those with uh, limitations in terms of logistic or uh, understanding of, uh, of the technology that actually can provide added value to the services. And just a quick overview of the basic radiotherapy workflow where the oncologists come to, the, to the, uh, the decisions to treat the patients for the radiotherapy. The patients will undergo uh, simulations using uh, CT scans. And then uh, these CT, uh, CT images were used for two purposes. One is for treatment planning. Another one will be used for the treatment uh, setup, uh, treatment setup uh, verifications. And for treatment planning, uh, this CT will input into the treatment planning system in order for the physicists or the dosimetries to plan uh, the, for the treatments. Um, and they can use the treatment, plans, treatment plan system to verify or assess the those coverage to the target volume, as well as the tolerance, uh, tolerance or the dose imparted to the organ arrays. Once the physicists and the dosimetrists or the oncologists are happy, and the oncologists will approve the plan before they move uh, to further uh, patient-specific QA. And then uh, once it is uh, approved, or uh, uh, um, then it can move to for radiotherapy treatment delivery. So CT simulator is commonly used to acquire high-quality volumetric data set of patient in treatment positions 
And of course, the most uh, most important uh, things that, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Kitiba, is the accurate delineations would be the most important things in order to prevent geographical misses as well as to prevent underestimations of tumor extension. Where we know that uh, from the CT images, it, it, it is quite limited in terms of the functional uh, images. And all these uh, uh, organ arrays, uh, all these uh, target volume is actually well defined by the ICU report. So as you can see here, one of the limitations uh, uh, by the CT's images is the low sensitivity in assessing the tumor viability and extent of nod nodule disease, which can be an important prognostic factor for the patients. As you can see on your left side with the CT images, you hardly can differentiate the margin of where is the cancerous tissue. Where with the PEP CT, the fusion images on your right, you can actually see that there is high FDG uptake in the apical segment of the right upper loops or with the uh, very huge diameters. And there is adjacent uh, pleural mass with the extra thoracic growth and destructions of the dorsal uh, on the right. So, with the, uh, the beauty of this PEP CT, it's actually provided us not only the anatomy uh, information, but also with these functional images. So just uh, a quick uh, overview is that uh, the PET-CT, it can use to detect the, the uh, emitted photons, uh, for example, the fluorine 18 at different parts of the body in order to detect and locate the tumor cells. And it allows us to visualize and quantify the tumor features on a molecular level beyond the merge of morphological extent on the conventional imaging. And we know that the PET radiopharmaceuticals have having a very high specificity due to the specific binding uh, to the particular targets. So uh, Dr. Kitiva also shared us about the useful, usefulness of PET CT in oncology, in diagnosis, staging, treatment planning, as well as treatment response. So in particular today, we'll talk about more on treatment planning, where a lot of publications has shown us that a very good result of using this PET CT for these purposes. And it can be useful for the brain, head and neck, lung, gastrointestinal, uh, uh, urinary cases, as well as gynecological cases. And to be honest, uh, if, uh, uh, if it just a common uh, uh, logistic uh, challenges that happens in most of the hospital, we, uh, nuclear medicine, uh, the PET CT image, uh, images is actually managed by the nuclear medicine imaging, uh, nuclear medicine department, whereby radiation oncology is managed by another radiation oncology department. So, in terms of to integrate these two, uh, these two uh, technology together for the sake of the treatments of the cancer patients, sometimes it can be quite challenging. So the so it can uh, it involve the coordinations and collaborations between the the staff of these two departments, for example, from the radiation oncology team, it has to do uh, with the patient's positioning, patient alignments, immobilization devices, and a mask, whereby for nuclear medicine's uh, department, it has to be involved with the PET CTs, uh, the fat radio pharmaceuticals administrations, patient positions, intra uh, intravenous contrast uh, if it is needed. And of course, with this uh, use of the PET CT in radiotherapy, not only the typical uh, requirements for the QA's uh, program that need to be complied by the users, but also some other stringent uh, requirements in terms of the performance, uh, mechanical performance of the PET CT uh, scanner have to be fulfilled. So the keyword is uh, this. Inter uh, technical integrations uh, it involve the interactions of various professionals. So the key, uh, so we have to do in a teamwork. So these are the basic uh, considerations that actually we need to think about when we want to integrate our capacity for radiotherapy treatment planning. The first is about the hardware itself. Secondly, is about the quality control of the machine. Thirdly, data acquisitions and reconstructions data transfer between the nuclear medicine workstations and the TPS, image contouring, as well as the patient setup and the staff training. So there are three main items that we need to consider in order for the PET-CT to be used for RTP. The first is to uh, the flat table couch that which have to become uh, uh, as an additional, uh, additional devices or additional equipments uh, to 
to be top, to be put on top of the existing uh, patient couch. And it is a flat table couch, which is actually uh, similar to what uh, is available with the Linux machines. And this table couch have to be, have with the indexing uh, uh, identifications, which able for the indexing of the immobilization devices later on. And secondly, is about the external mobile laser system, where you can see on uh, the lateral side, lateral side of uh, the machine and the sagittals, we have a lasers, mobile laser uh, at the external of the machine. And thirdly, it's about the suitable uh, gantry diameter, where we can see these tunnels is, able, is big enough to accommodate those immobilization devices for the patient setup. This graph shows that uh, 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 the gantry uh, diameters from uh, most of the manufacturers in the market, where you can see typical spec CT uh, gantry diameter is about 70 centimeters, where some of the uh, manufacturers, they also provided uh, up to 800 or 900 uh, in diameters uh, for the gantry tunnels, which is actually good for these purposes. For quality control of the machines, we have to fulfill uh, uh, some of the stringent uh, requirements, for example, uh, APM's uh, TG66 also requires um, uh, for the specific uh, like CT simulators, and this could be applied uh, to the, uh, the couch uh, and also the laser uh, uh, requirements in terms of the QC. And I think it's about the data transfer uh, way to the TPS. The TG53 has well defined about all these procedures in order to be carried out by the users. Some of the manufacturer also provided testing procedures, uh, which is uh, purposely for the RTP. Of course, uh, the laser alignments and the, the couch uh, pet CT alignment and the image registrations is uh, the, one of the very important key point that enables uh, this technology to be fully utilized for these purposes. These are the, some of the figures that uh, carry out in. Uh, in the local hospital, where uh, some we're using some testing tools, as you can see, the TG sixty six uh, define uh, as well as as planned on the testing procedure, where we use our local B spot phantoms in order to to represent the TG sixty six phantoms um, for these uh, testing purposes. Another example is the daily QA procedures, uh, where a uh, very uh, it is useful for the, uh, for, for the users to list out what are the uh, quality controls procedure to be carried out in a, a certain interval, daily, monthly, uh, quarterly, and annually. So this is one of the example that the daily uh, laser QA to be carried out by the users where they will look into the is external laser movement as well as internal laser. So a typical data acquisitions for, for the PET CT in RTP will involve a, a total scan. Uh, and then if there is a specific target volume to be, uh, to be looked into, then a limited uh, imaging range will be, uh, will, be, will be set. And patient positioning and acquisition protocol should be the same. And the image reconstruction should be standardized for all the PET CTs used for the RT planning. And we know that uh, there is a potential artifact that may be come into picture due to the some limitation in the patient setup as well as um, uh, patients, uh, the patients, uh, the meta compositions within the patient's body. One good thing that actually help us, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Kitiwa just now, where there is a, a GITA PET CT, uh, if can be carried out, it can actually reduce, uh, improve the accuracy of the CT and PET image uh, registrations and to minimize the issues of image blurring. So this is one example of the respiratory gating uh, for the PET CT that actually can really improve the workflow that can give us a very good uh, uh, outcomes in terms of the patient's uh, uh, images. So you can see that uh, with different uh, cycles of the uh, of the breathing patterns, so we can uh, we can actually uh, imaging. We can set the imaging region that only those regions were acquired. Uh, the X-ray will be exposed to the patients. So, in terms of data transfer between the uh, nuclear medicine workstation and the TPS, security of the data and integrity of the data transfer is uh, very important. And all these uh, the GTV uh, impact 
can be stored as an RD daikon structures. And all these RD structure can be transferred via uh, network connections. As you can mention, uh, as you can uh, imagine that some of the same uh, deep nuclear medicine department and radiation oncology center might be far apart uh, in, in physicals. So the network connection should be good enough. And this, uh, one of the good, uh, important things to check is about the integrity of the data transfer, where you can check all these features, for example, the total number of images planned, sent, and received, and uh, basic display and quantification fe uh, features uh, that received in the TPS, and all this have to be checked, and it is well uh, defined in the DG, uh, APM DG53. And this is one example of the important uh, uh, step that where the collaborations of the quantum unit to the electron density is uh, important in order to input these uh, information to our treatment planning systems. And we use the Tomo uh, cheese phantom in order with a different uh, density plot in order to get all this value. Another important thing is about the workflow where all this have to be well designed in terms of the image flow and also uh, how all these images can be can be transferred between the uh, imaging uh, workstations towards the uh, TPS as well as the treatment unit. Another thing to consider about uh, image contouring, where we know that uh, in the vendor side, we, there are a lot of uh, different uh, segmentations uh, uh, protocol that can be used. So we are actually, uh, the user have to select what is actually useful for your centers and you are confident with among the oncologists as well as the nuclear medicine physicians. And the newly come into the picture is about the AI assistor, which is actually interesting in the market that these uh, tools can actually assist the users in order to uh, uh, accelerate the process of this contouring uh, method. So the patient setup, because it involves with two teams where a briefing uh, for each patient should, uh, is very important. And we, we know that communications among the two teams uh, is, uh, is also uh, a, a very good, uh, very uh, important uh, in terms of the consideration of this. And one more uh, thing is about the ride run, where uh, before the patients being administrated with the radio pharmaceuticals, we also recommended a ride run, uh, where it actually helped the technologies as well as the uh, therapists in order to simulate what is going to happen during the simulations to avoid any, uh, any uh, uh, obstructions. There are uh, cases that actually uh, excite, very exciting cases that actually uh, we share with uh, everyone since the, there is time limitations, I just go once. This is one, uh, one of the 79 year old men with a right lung and no carcinoma. Contrast enhanced CT thorax shows that right upper loops lung nodule suspicious of lung malignancy. But with the FDG, uh, PET CT, it shows the FDG right lung uh, carcinoma with ipsilateral mediastinal nodes metastasis. And from initials of the TNM, TNM staging of 1A, actually uh, later on it moved to the stage of 2B, where actually it actually alters the management of the patients in, in terms of the cancer treatments. So some of the tech home message, the integrations of the PET CT uh, in RTP post challenges, which involve multi uh, multidisciplinary team, as well as some stringent RTP requirements. But there are some merits that, that actually we can take into the consideration actually will help the, in terms of improve the target delineation, reducing intra-observer and inter-observer var uh, variabilities and making the treatment volumes more standard across individual and institutions. We have several cases that actually we have uh, visualized that it can really uh, reduce uh, the, the, the volume of the treated uh, target volume, which is actually uh, um, very useful for, uh, to reduce the complications uh, that will uh, occur to the patients. And it, it also enables the introductions of the novel treatment techniques, which could able allow those escalations to the target volume and better sparing of normal structures. And with this 4D gating scan, it can actually uh, improve the accuracy and to reduce uh, the misalignment between the PET and CT images. And of course, what we hope is to improve the outcome and to reduce the complications to the patients. So with that, I would like to thank uh, and back to the moderator. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. 
So first of all, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ekha Wenji and Dr. Kitevat Khamban for such an interesting and informing, informi uh, informative uh, presentations. Uh, we have a few questions uh, from the speaker side. So first of them uh, is uh, what uh, slice thicknesses uh, should be chosen for the imaging? It's from Debulina Mukherjee from India. Should I right. repeat it? Yes, I think I got it. Yeah. So it depends on the size of the tumor size. So typically, uh, one to three uh, will be very typical. Yeah. So if you need to, like, for example, uh, for SRS, then probably the thinner size will be needed. Okay. Um, the second question is uh, from Sheji Kazu Fukuda. Uh, and the question is which is more useful for treatment planning? PET or CT or MRI plus CT or both of them? Oh, this is very uh, interesting questions. I think uh, currently I personally I don't have any uh, experience in using the MRI for the treatment planning, but I think it's back to the principle of the treatment planning itself where MRI in certain cases because it provides a very uh, good anatomy uh, anatomies guidance and uh, and actually it can uh, really give very good uh, um, information for the treatment plannings. But I'm not sure whether, uh, uh, because for our center, we actually, we use, we have two set of uh, uh, images where not only the PET CT, we also have a typical CT scans to, to be fused together. And what we actually use is the CT uh, from the CT simulator itself in order to guide uh, during the treatment planning. So it's actually a two-step job instead of just only single capacity for the treatment planning purposes. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ikao Wenji and Dr. Kitivat. Yeah, I agree, so, uh, uh, Dr. Ikao, yes. And, and the one thing is that uh, this is a good question. So uh, in, in our institution, we use MRI for the treatment planning. Well, it's like, but. You know, the, the problem for the MRI is that it doesn't have the effect on density. This is the challenging for the MRI for the treatment planning. But of course, to use the PET-CT, as I mentioned, and also from the ER mentioned, uh, we can use the information from the PET imaging in terms of the subclinical information that couldn't see from the MRI or, or the CT to help to define the, the target volume. Yes, and then, yeah, can, can probably can change the plan during the plan, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, before winding up, uh, I would like to request our new president, Eva Bizak, to say a few words or address our uh, participants as it's our first uh, webinar of the year and with the new tenure of a firm. <laughs> Professor Eva Bizak. Well, thank you so much, uh, Professor Eva, for your, um, yeah, for your question. Well, so uh, for the for the new development of the whole body PET CT, right? So, so right now, so so uh, we we uh, so right now we have the total body of the PET CT imaging, like from the unit imaging, something like that. That improve a lot of the sensitivity and also, um, and also very useful for the kinetic modeling. But uh, the thing is that it's like the cost of the scanner is quite pretty high, about five times compared to the, yeah. the PCT that we have right now. Yeah, but I heard that in China, they install like uh, a lot of the total body of the PCT. Oh, is yes. that so? Jin, maybe you can comment. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, we did the, uh, uh, actually for PCT, uh, usually uh, the normal procedure is whole body uh, PCT. Mm -hmm. We we feel I think a uh, few centers was, uh, uh, it's on, only for the patients or, or the physicians have some special requirements. Mm -hmm. Usually we would do the whole body uh, PET C scans. Mm -hmm. But do you have the, there is this new equipment where you have a large tunnel, and you mm -hmm. acquire the whole body PET C T scan all at once. It that costs like ten fifteen million dollars. Oh, yeah. I, I no. didn't notice this, but I think uh, it's not popular yet. 
I think it's, it's only maybe for one or two top centers, they maybe have some of these yeah. equipment. Uh, yeah. In, in Colorado, we do that. Yeah, we, we, Australia I don't see only has two. Uh, I can definitely see also benefit maybe in monitoring the targeted therapies because you can see the uptake of the isotopes and maybe movement of the daughters and maybe have a bit better dosimetry in the nuclear uh, isotope therapies. Yes, right. I, I agree. That's that very, uh, very useful. And so right now, uh, it seems like the topic regarding for the kinetic modeling is very popular right now. I mean, uh, in, in, in nuclear medicine. So uh, for the total body, that's very really useful about that. Yes. Mm. So we have a few more questions. And that is, the another question is, what is the magnitude of tolerance of the fusion between CT and PET? Usually it will be one mm. Okay. Another question is, uh, MR Linux are available in the market. So please comment on MRP, MR PET. I guess you want to oh. say MR. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah, right. MR Linux is already available in the market. In Thailand, we have uh, one institution that already installed for the MR Linux. Yeah, but not in my institution. Uh, regarding for the PET MR, right? For the PET MR. Well, of course, it's very really useful. I mean, um, in terms of the uh, soft tissue and also for the advanced study, like for the new <clears throat> yeah, for, for, for the, in terms of the brain scan. So we can uh, have more like the advanced pulse sequence from the, from the MRI yeah, to additional uh, information to, to, the, to, the, to the PET scan. But uh, if, you, if, if your center doesn't have like the PET CT, should install the PCT first and then after that follow by the PMR. <laughs> I agree, I agree, Kitty yeah, I that think, is yeah. <laughs> so we gain our capacity first in order to have the uh, our staff, uh, our human resources to be ready with the technology, then we can move further. So I think uh, it is actually a good time for, to, to progress. And one thing that, uh, that we understood that PET uh, guided uh, Linux is, uh, is in research mode now. I think in future, we are looking into that uh, to use this uh, molecular, uh, molecular imaging uh, adaptive radiotherapy in the future. So hopefully there will be a very exciting spirit to, 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 uh, to go to. So, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, so we, we are have, almost long uh, time. No. Yeah, we have one, two more questions left and they are asking for quick comments only. So for, uh, there's a question like, uh, for the accurate target delineation, both 4D gated PET and 4D gated CT are necessary. Unfortunately, it will take a lot of time for 4D gated PET. Do you think it is practical? Uh, yeah, I totally agree with Kim that this is actually very practical uh, issues in, in our radio oncology, uh, radiation oncology departments. I think it's back to the foundations of the treatments uh, itself. So uh, it has to be uh, justified and we have to uh, really think what is a very, what is a, a important points for the patients, what is the oncologist's uh, point of view uh, for the patient's uh, safety set and the outcome of the treatment itself. For example, if the, if the target volume is, uh, is at, at adjacent of the lungs and, and definitely you have to consider the DIBH uh, for, the, for, for, for the cases and I think it back to the uh, clinical judgment uh, where what will be the best for the patient itself. So we have a last question for the day. Um, that is, what is the suggested percentage of SUV for GTV delineation? Percentage of max SUV. Kitiva, if you agree with me, uh, these are quite center oriented uh, a value, right? I think typically I think vendor will set uh, about 40. Yeah, right. Yeah. right, they have the range of the percent maximum of the SUV is yeah. also on the height of the like the cancer and the location and also the size of the of the uh, of the tumor that could be affect the um, the boundary of the of the um, GTV. Okay. So okay. lastly, I want to. Um, Say, uh, inform all the participants that I, I got some queries regarding certificates and registrations. 
So for the certificates, we are in the process of uh, CPD accreditation uh, process. So soon we'll get that uh, CPD points information and we'll inform you about that. And regarding registration and participate, uh, participation certificates, you can directly write to Dr. Mary Joan. She is um, PRC chair and you can get the email ID from a uh, firm website. So um, thank you everyone, uh, Dr. Ekha ONG, Dr. Kittivat, Professor Eva Bizak, Professor uh, Jin, and all our participants. So I thank you all. And lastly, I want to... Uh, no, 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 no. I think uh, is Dr. Iwa is still there. Yeah, our yeah, president. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to say <laughs> anything at all. <laughs> I think this is our, uh, yeah, uh, quite, quite I just want to, I just want to share the uh, webinar for these new terms and so yeah. we can improve in the future. Or, so while uh, we're waiting for Rajni to increase the, to share her screen and increase the, uh, it's a bit small what we see Rajni on the screen. Uh, because yeah. we see the whole desktop at the moment. Yeah. I would like okay. to firstly uh, thank you, Dr. Kitiwad and Dr. Eighau for a fantastic presentation. And I hope all the participants obtain really solid educational value and learned new things about the importance of PET city in radiation oncology. Secondly, I would like to thank uh, Professor Jing Xians and his education team for creating a wonderful webinar program for the next six months, as well as the AFOM school offerings that will happen on Saturday mornings. I believe it's the third Saturday of the month. Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, hoping to contribute to ac access to good educational opportunities for all members of AFOM, especially in times where maybe conference traveling is still a bit limited because of the tail end of the, of the pandemic. So thank you everyone, Rajni, over to you. Thank, thank you so you. much, Matthew. That's, that's quite inspirational. Uh, so I want to inform everybody that our second webinar will be on 6th of April uh, and we'll have our um, lovely president for the that program, Dr. Eva Bizak. And the title of the program would be the review of the cumulative doses from radiological imaging and the risk of cancer in children's and young adults. So uh, thank you very much for being with us. And uh, I wish you uh, a good day ahead. Thank okay. you, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.